Howdy, howdy, howdy. And happy to be back again. Um, okay, so last video I asked uh, if you would like to have a Q&A, throw me some questions, and we'll see what happens. And boy, did y'all come through. So I picked the top ten. So let's just jump right in. <laughs> Okay, so the first question is, what is wrong with me? If you have been watching my videos, you'll notice that I say quite often that I wasn't feeling well. Okay, so what's wrong with me? Um, Hubby would say that's a loaded question. Because, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> but uh, physically, what is wrong with me is I... I'm tired all the time. Let me take these off. They are reflecting pretty bad. Um, pretty much tired a lot. And um, and then on top of that, there is the C word. We just don't like the C word around here. Uterine cancer. But as my doctor said, if you're going to have any kind of cancer, that would be the one to have because a hysterectomy will take care of it. And so my recent hysterectomy should hopefully have taken care of it. And but then there's other things, you know, old age, arthritis, degenerative disc disorder so in my lower back so that causes a lot of medication medications make me nauseous medications make me sleepy you know so it's just part of being older and not being in the best of shape so if you're young please take care of yourself because <laughs> you're gonna end up here someday uh, okay, so that's that's basically what's wrong with me, um, physically. <laughs> it won't go there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so um, next up is how did I learn to crochet and how long have I been crocheting? Yes, that's two questions in one, but they kind of coincide with each other. So, um, when I was nine, so there you go, <laughs> a really long time ago, decades and decades and decades ago. <laughs> okay, so, um, Okay, <laughs> I was nine years old, and I went to camp, and they taught us how to do the chain stitch on our fingers, and so I got really good at that, And um, but I have always been around crocheters and knitters and sewers. Every woman in my family line has had some kind of crafting ability and uh, so it was just naturally passed down so when I was 11 I was taught how to crochet a single crochet backward you know back and forth back and forth so I decided I was going to make a blanket for my Barbie doll and uh, <laughs> let's just say that came out like this <laughs> then, then it did uh, like this you know? <laughs> it was like this I kept losing stitches on the ends uh, which is pretty normal yeah that's pretty normal and um, so anyway and that also coincides with the question first crocheted item so that was my first crocheted item which was a complete um, disaster but uh, my first crochet toy, uh, I do still have a picture of it, and that was my first crochet toy, and my first crochet toy was in 2011. 
and um, and the next question which is how long have you been in business so I started my business let's see let's go back a little bit 2008 my sister-in-law gave me a computer she had upgraded she didn't want it so she gave it to me and that was my very first computer I'm a I'm a slow slow snail as far as technology goes so 2008 was my first computer and so after a few <laughs> months of trying to figure out how to work the thing I looked up uh, Red Heart uh, Yarns uh, they had their own website back then anyway I saw patterns I saw charts on how to read patterns and that was it I was hooked I was like look at this and so I studied and and worked over and over and over and over again trying to learn how to read a pattern I have been crocheting all my life but never with a pattern and so yeah I had to teach myself how to read a pattern and so that was that was interesting and it was in 2011 that I decided to try making my own pattern and there you go Southern Gals Crochet was born so we've been in business since 2011 and let me tell you it was slow like the first couple of years I only had like two or three patterns and I think I made maybe ten dollars a year <laughs> and those let me tell you those patterns that I made way back when Oh, what a mess. What a mess. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I say that word? I'm sorry. Hmm. I did not know what I was doing. So, let's see. How many patterns do I try to make a month? Okay, so my goal is always to try to have at least one pattern a month. So far, I am at like 19, and it's only half the year. So, it's just sometimes it just flows really well for me. My brain just like click, 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 and it's it's good. And then other times, it's like my brain just takes a mental vacation. <laughs> so yeah, definitely, I try to get at least one pattern a month. That's my goal every year, is to do at least one pattern a month. This question was, why do you promote other designers? And, of course, my brain, the first thing it says is, why wouldn't I? You know, like, there are thousands and thousands of fantastic designers out there. I try to achieve myself in the same category but man there are some of them out there that it just like blows my mind they are so amazing I mean if you're on Instagram you are actually being exposed to a small small amount of pattern designers there are so many 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 pattern designers that I don't even think you've even heard of so yeah and then there's a lot of them um, that you know from my day a decade ago that aren't even in business anymore so I still have some of their patterns you know so I think that everybody deserves a shout out to their fabulous patterns and so yeah, why wouldn't you? It's not a competition. It's a community. If you're in competition, you are in the wrong business because 
it is not a competition. It is, we all need to come together and make this business a success for everyone. Not just for yourself, but for everyone. What took me so long to open this channel? Okay, so the first thing you have to know is Hubby made a really good living as a truck driver. And, you know, it was good enough for us. It's just the two of us. And so it, it was a good. And I was making a little extra money on the side on with pattern sales, you know, and, and custom sales. And, um, but then hubby health started to decline and so we had to make the decision of him to stop working and so now he is on early social security it drastically reduced our income to the point where we needed to figure out ways to increase my income so that we can supplement you know some survival mode you know survival mode so we st we started adding markets and custom orders and we've been adding uh, extra things to try to increase the income and that's where we're at and so I decided that I just gotta get over myself and figure out how to do a video because that's just the way to go you need to do you need to do markets and you need to do more personal sales and you need to do more uh, videos and you need to get out there you get to get your name out there you know and stop being so passive about it basically <laughs> kicking the ass I, that's how my business has grown we are now doing videos so next up is uh, free pattern versions okay let me just say I know a lot of designers do this and the whole reason for doing it is to get you to come to their website spend time on their website get exposed to ads so that they can earn ad revenue. I get it. I, I get it. It's a huge draw to bring people in and to find an extra source of income. I hesitate to do it because I have seen so many people have their patterns stolen from them. And so far, knock on wood, I have not had that happen to me yet. And I don't know if I am comfortable enough to say the ad revenue is worth the risk. I don't think I'm there yet. Maybe someday, but no, I, I do not see that happening for my channel or my website. I just, I cannot see it happening. Maybe for my actual free patterns, the ones that are already free, maybe. But not for the paid ones. I mean, that's, that's just, I can't see it happening. Okay. And the other question to that was, are, have I thought about offering it in other languages? I have, but here's the problem. I don't know how to read those other languages. I don't know how to help someone with a problem in other languages. Until they can come up with some better technology that will help yeah, I don't see that happening. I, I don't see how I would be able to be efficient with that. I mean, yes, it would be wonderful to have it out there for other languages. That'd be great. But 
if I don't know how to read it, I don't know how to help them. So, yeah, I, I just, I don't see it happening. Okay, and tutorials. So, again, this goes uh, in the line of free patterns, uh, tutorials. I, I have a few tutorials already, I think, uh, two of troublesome spots in my patterns that, you know, just to help you out with this little troublesome spot, you know, that most people are like, hmm, I don't understand that. So I, that I definitely can do. But as far as doing a full-blown, here's the pattern, show you how to do it kind of all the way through, yeah, I don't see that happening. If it's already one of my free patterns, I may consider adding that. And I just bought the stand that will hold the, hold the camera right here so I can take my hands. So I just bought that. And so we'll see how those turn out. Um, I have a lot of learning to do. I, there is just so much about this side of the business that I don't know how to do. <laughs> but I'm doing my best. Okay, and let's see. What is my favorite yarn and hook size? Hmm, that's a hard one. Um, my typical, before all this new yarn started coming out and started being popular, all this plushy yarn, my typical go-to yarns are Red Heart Super Saver and Big Twist um, Super Value by Joann's and, um, and Burnett um, Value just your basic acrylic yarns and with a g-hook. Uh, g-hook is a 4.00 millimeter and uh, those are my go-to's. Uh, even with the Chanel I use a G. Uh, it's my favorite hook and but here lately I have been um, messing around with the bigger yarns and so, as of right now, my favorite hook with the bigger yarns is a, is a K, and it is a 6.5 millimeter. So those are my two favorite hooks that I use pretty much all the time. And brand of hooks, believe it or not, I'm still very old school. I do a Susan Bates. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, Susan Bates is my favorite hook. I used to do just the regular boils, but I always found that it split my yarns and it would just make me mad. When I was introduced, my best friend Becky, she was a Susan Bates girl and she introduced me to the um, inline. Bates is an inline, whereas Boyles is a tapered. And uh, she introduced me to these hooks, and I have not gone back since. And so there you are. So yarns and hooks. Okay, and the last question is, what is your daily business routine? Well, okay. I don't think I have a routine. <laughs> I'm kind of sporadic. I am. <laughs> when I think of it, uh, when a question comes up, I answer it. When a uh, comment comes up, I answer it as quickly as I can just to get it done. Because if I don't, I will tend to forget and next thing you know, it's been weeks and you haven't heard from me. <laughs> So, um, I try to answer and comment back as quickly as possible, and uh, 
when I get up, I the first thing I do is go to the computer and do all of that. Emails, um, comments, and um, any kind of pattern issues and then I you know go on Etsy and answer those questions and then go to Facebook and deal with anything there and you know because I've also got orders that are going to be shipped out I need to do invoicing and, and stuff like that so yeah I spend a good probably two hours every morning just doing that kind of business and then it's uh, you know I send my husband to town to mail things if I need be and uh, you know there's packaging and let's see what else <laughs> somewhere in there there's some coffee copious amounts of coffee and then there's maybe some breakfast um, and then usually around I guess probably 10 o'clock 10 30 I am getting ready to start crocheting and I will crochet for probably I don't know probably about four hours and then it's time for me to start thinking about what's for supper and well, hubby is usually on that he's like he's questioning me as soon as I get up what's for supper <laughs> so yeah there's that but um so th there's crocheting and then there's supper and then there's back on the computer again to do more things and then probably around seven I head to my room and go get some more crochet done before going to bed. So I typically put in about six hours worth of crochet. And that's, now we're talking on a good day. <laughs> on a bad day, you know, health wise, on a bad day, yeah, it's more like two hours in between lunch and dinner and maybe two hours in the evening so we're looking at probably about four hours of work so not a whole lot going on there <laughs> and I'm not a super fast crocheter I mean I've seen some of the videos of these girls crocheting and it's like whoa oh girls you need to slow down you're gonna hurt yourself it's, it's not going to be fun trying to do it when you're older. So uh, I'm not a very big fast crocheter. Um, that's pretty much my daily routine. Um, and then now there's uh, making videos. And boy, I, I had no idea take, just doing a video could be so time consuming. And, um, and then you've got to edit it and then you've got to process it and then you've got to upload it and sometimes it can take from start to finish sometimes it can take up to six to eight hours for me because you know it's me <laughs> it's, it's me this particular space that I am using is a very small corner in my room and when I'm not using it for making a video all of this equipment gets taken down and then my crochet stuff gets moved back in because this is where I crochet when I am going to do a video I have to move things around and set it all back up and take it back down and move things back in and so yeah it's a it's an ordeal and so from start to finish can take quite a while and I told hubby this morning I need to do a video and he goes well you better do that now because that takes forever <laughs> and he's not lying he's not lying 
it, ta it takes a while. Even a small video can take a couple of hours to do. I think that is pretty much it. If I didn't give you a sufficient answer, please, please don't hesitate to message me, put it in the comments, something, you know, just let me know if there was more information you were looking for. And uh, I think that's it. And I appreciate you guys sticking around. I will talk to y'all later. Bye.